PowerShell functions. How to convert your scripts into functions and actually why would you want to use them? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, my name is Kamil Protushin and I've been recording videos about PowerShell for some time now. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to convert your script into a PowerShell function how to use parameters, how to make them so that Parash actually asks you for that parameters. In other words, we're going to create PowerShell-like experience because if you think about it, when you started using PowerShell, you called all these get, set, and etc. parameters. And obviously when we write a script at the first, usually we end up calling the script. So what I prepared for today, and this code is available on the GitHub, so if you want to have a look at it or follow along, just click the link in the description. But nevertheless, I will take you through the process of converting a simple script into the script that takes parameters and does few other things to it. So let's have a look. Hey, so this is my script. And just for your reference, I put four steps of the script, although I'll be only editing this one, pretty much the next steps two, three and four will be the next logical states in that. So you can just see straight away what the difference is. But if you'd like to follow along, I'll be pretty much editing that file because that'll be much more visual rather than just flipping you the script. So what we have pretty much, we have a, a simple script that asks a user for a couple of details, name and age and then pretty much does a little bit of sync conversion in it. So we create an email, display that information on the, on the screen, and then it will decide, based on the age variable, will decide whether you can display one or another message. Yeah. And this is obviously normal script. So no, normally you will come to the console and do something along the lines of calling it. PowerShell would like, ah, we need to go to the folder. And not this folder, I want to go to the folder. And when we are there, we pretty much want to call this script. And when we call it, you ask me obviously for my name, and I can say it, and I can say my age, and then it seems to be working. Yeah, it capitalized my name, created my email, and etc. But problem with this approach is what if I will, for example, don't provide name, don't provide age? it still executes, yeah? I will need to do some sort of more checks. Oh, uh, what about, okay, with the name, we can obviously provide something, but what if I, on my name, I will just say no. It will still execute and doesn't really care that I gave it a string, a text, isn't it? Because really what happens here is that we are reading host. So this is the problem. We are, PowerShell will just take what's on read host and pretty much convert it into text. So we will need to do some extra checks, which we can do, although with PowerShell is not really necessary. What else is the problematic is that there is no really a way to nicely call this. So if I wanted to call this script now from the command line, I can't because there's no parameters. PowerShell doesn't know what to do about that. So how can we fix this? One way to fix this is to introduce something called param. So let me remove that lines one through four. And pretty much what we do at the top, we add param, okay? And when we add param, that indicates to PowerShell that this will take parameters. And what we do in that case, instead, we take this variable and we pretty much add them here. So let's try to do this. We can get rid of this prompts. And that's it. I will save this now and I will try to run this and we see it runs. It runs with no information, doesn't care, but what we can do now, I can add parameters, yeah? So I can add my name, I can add my age and this will work. It still doesn't do any validation, but now I can actually use it a bit more like a normal commandlet, yeah? But it's not quite perfect because let's say that I require the name and I acquire the age, yeah? So what can I do about that? For this, we can add a squarely bracket, a squarely, a square bracket called parameter, and we can pretty much what we add in, we add in an attribute. 
and we tell to this attribute that this is mandatory. There are many more, and I will explain actually go to detail in them on the another video. But for now, I just want to show you the difference. So let me try now again parameter mandatory. So what I'm telling pretty much, name is mandatory and age is mandatory. Okay? So when I have it, let me save. Let me just execute this code now. And you see, it provides me, it actually prompts me, you have to, because it's mandatory. But what if I just enter and enter? Well, it still runs, because I didn't say it's not required, but yet we have same kind of function to read holes. So let me try Amil and my age, and then it behaved the way I wanted. Yep. But it's still, if we have a look, put some rubbish, it still doesn't really work properly. So what we can do, we can specify a type. So type is pretty much, what is it? So I can tell this is a string. So name is a parameter string and age is a parameter of integer. Yeah, so it's number. And we can pretty much specify any type that exists in PowerShell for that. So let's try now. Let's run it. So we have a name. Okay, but now look for the age. See, it says I punch in the text and it doesn't like it. I punch in the text, it doesn't let me. The moment I punch in the number, it works. So just by this two little validations, and if I try actually ready for the command, then it will complain that it actually cannot use it because it expects the number. Yeah, that message to my says the number. At this way, I have much more control what actually is being supplied to my script, yeah? Because for one, I can make it mandatory, and for two, I can pretty much specify what is expected, yeah? What value, so much more predi prediction and much less work from my point. Uh, and what else we can do? We can pretty much convert that into a function. And by this, what we mean, we at the very top of everything, so before our script, and we can actually make this a bit nicer. So at the top of the of the of the script, we just literally add function, and this is followed by the name of the function. Yeah. So for example, get hyphen person, because I'll be kind of retrieve information about person, and then I put everything in the script block in the squarely brackets. So I do that at the very front, at the very end. I then right click and do format document and pretty much that my function. So what's the difference? When I call it now, it doesn't execute. Yeah, I can do this or I can try to call the file again. It doesn't because what happens here, because it's function, PowerShell did load it to the memory. In other words, if I go get person, it's my function. So if I call it now, no name, I can do my, I don't know, let's say I didn't read it, what it asks me, I actually asked me for the age, yeah? Boom, it works. So in this few short steps, we actually converted our script that takes anything to the function that you can actually now load to the memory, we can pass it to others, or we can use it with other functions. And there are many more parameters here. So actually the next video I will post, it will be actually all about how we can make the most out of parameters, what values are there, what's how, for example, make it so you can take a pipeline. But yeah, stay tuned for this. So that's literally how you convert a script into a function, add some basic validation to it. And as I said, I will make follow up videos to this because I'm in the long term, I'm thinking to make actually set of courses so that you'll be able to build PowerShell module. I don't know how this all will come up together, but well, I will just take you step by step so that you actually will be able to produce your own modules. And modules is when you have a bunch of functions that have something in common to manage something together. Yeah, so they all together think that, uh, can work and be, I don't know, like you have module for Exchange, SharePoint, Active Directory, anything like that. They all actually are modules, but and they have all common functionality, which is managing a specific product or doing something what makes your life easier. But to get that, we actually need to be able to actually write nice functions.
So stay tuned, hope you enjoyed this one, and I see you next time. See ya!